Do you have geeky needs? Cosplay, comics, animation, fantasy, science fiction, fan fiction, fiction fiction, online gaming, council gaming, card gaming, board game gaming, LARPing. For discussions on these and many more, then you better call Saw. Geeks of the Week! Steph, I'm sorry you didn't like Rat Queens and your ride to pocket you some work, but I felt the simplicity of it was its strength, and I'm shocked that the creator described it that way, so already girls going on a quest doesn't sound appealing. However, I still stop by my review, but at least you gave it a try, and now I owe you $2.99 because I do feel responsible. Also, tread lightly. And how cool that someone on Fangasm has seen your comic book reviews. You know what that means. You have to review a comic again. Come on now. You did ask us this week who plays on TV and why. I'm going to go with Brian Cranston. Because on Malcolm in the Middle, he showed you could be funny. And on Breaking Bad, he showed you could be downright scary. Not that I'm a scary dude or anything, but people say I have a scary face. Wait. Is that an insult? Pyro, I think it'd be a great idea if certain fans were allowed to do films, because judging by the trailers they make, I think they could do a great job on it. There's a lot of talented people out there. Ludico, I checked out that PBS Wonder Woman trailer, and now I'm going to have to find it to watch it because it looks really interesting. Enjoy the Wonder Woman comic, it's one of DC's best books right now, and that talking raccoon you're referring to is from Guardians of the Galaxy, and that movie might surprise you. But I do agree, there needs to be a Wonder Woman TV show or movie out already. And if Marvel owned her, there would be. So, get on that, DC. And Mickey, you complimented me on my singing. And it felt like Batman complimenting me on my car. I was flattered. But you have the Batmobile, so come on now. Still, I thank you. Now that Breaking Bad has had its trip to Belize, hear my thoughts on the conclusion. Wow. I was left speechless. It's hard for a show that's been so hyped up to announce such a strong note, but this one did. We saw Walter White at his most raw, his most truthful. We saw his soul. I don't think any other television character has been so exposed. This was one of the most addicting series I've ever seen. Easily cracks my top 5, and not an easy 5 to get into. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor, watch it from the beginning. Walter White's transformation is just uh, incredible. I'm going to miss it dearly, and I bid it a fond farewell. It can't be over! No! <laughs> Mama, no! I love October, I love Halloween and the horror genre, so I'm super excited that on Wednesday, October 9th, American Horror Story is set to return. It's titled Coven, it's going to be about witches and set in New Orleans. Jessica Lange is still on the cast and that makes me super happy because she did a superb job the first two seasons. Check the link below for the trailer. And are you guys looking forward to this season? Let me know in the comments below. Normally I review comics new releases. But all this month, I'll be recommending scary or creepy comics to go with the theme of October. However, I'll still be reviewing the new releases on my non-YouTube channel. So without further ado, it's time for a comic book review from me, the best comic book review in the world! Yes! This week I'm focusing on Revival, written by Tim Seeley and not by Mike Norton. And if The Walking Dead made a classic 90s cop show, you'd have this comic. Important disclaimer, this is not a zombie book. There are no zombies. Set in the town of Rothschild, Wisconsin, people have begun to rise from the dead and are referred to as weavers. Again, not zombies. They're not after eating brains or flesh. They have the ability to talk. The problem is they have returned a little disturbed. Here's an example. <laughs> I don't like my key, though, for a while. I don't like my key. This epidemic is only occurring in this small town, so it's been quarantined. There are many cast of characters, but the story mostly follows Officer Dana Cypress, who's been put in charge of Reviver incidents. One of the descriptions for this comic is a rural noir, and it's absolutely true. There are many cringe-worthy scenes, and the way it uses its scenery is classic noir imagery. I do have to warn you, this is a continuing series, so there's no definitive end as of yet. It mostly follows these cast of characters that have to deal with this bizarre incident that has occurred. The first trade collects the first five issues and the free comic book day short story. Pick it up if you want to set that creepy mood. I rate it 4 out of 5. I was actually able to review some of the new releases this week. So if you want my thoughts on Forever Evil issue 2, Hunger issue 3, and All New X-Men issue 17, follow the link below. That's it for me. Remember to subscribe to our wonderful channel. Follow me on Twitter, 
like us on Facebook because we haven't had a like in a while. Do you, do you guys not like us? Is it, is it me? No, it's you. Check out the rest of the geeks and stay geeky.